Hello and welcome to my new Let's Play of Dot Hack Infection. This is Usumachi speaking. And as you can see, this is a PlayStation 2 game. I bought them back in high school. That was way long time ago. <laughs> uh, it's divided in four volumes. It's the same game divided in four games. I'll explain more details as we go. There's a lot of cutscenes and a lot of stuff that will go on on the first episode. Basically, this whole first episode is going to be like one big tutorial. And uh, the second one is going to be partly a tutorial and then the storyline. So, there's going to be a lot of talking, a lot of reading, because this game consists on you trying to keep up by reading uh, posts on the forum, because this game kind of simulates an MMO. Um, it's kind of a rare game, not a lot of people own it, so you probably won't be able to see a lot of Let's Plays out there about it, but I hope that I can do a good job and make it as entertaining as possible, so I'll do my best. So enjoy the cutscenes. Der Mann des Schattens auf der Suche nach dem Abedrachen ist noch nicht zurückgekommen. Der Herd der Finsternis grollt. Helba, Königin der Finsternis, stellt schließlich ein Heer auf. Alparon, König des Lichts, grüßt sie. Und sie treffen sich am Fuße des Regenbogens. Die verfluchte Welle muss gemeinsam bekämpft werden. Der See von Alba brodelt. Der große Baum des Lichts fällt. Alle Macht zerfällt zu Tropfen im Tempel von Arche Köln. Wesen ohne Schatten, ihre Welt zerfällt zu nichts. Der Mann des Schattens auf der Suche nach dem Abenddrachen kehrt niemals mehr zurück. Okay, user registration is done. Now for a name. Yasuhiko's probably already there waiting for me. I'd better hurry. Alright, so we're going to be inputting our names. Uh, for the sake of the Let's Play, letting you guys know it's me. I'll just put my name here. It's not going to be shown very much. The main name of the character is Kite, so I'm going to keep it that way because in the storyline he is known as Kite, even though the game gives you the option to give him the name that you would, that you want. So let's just enter here and continue with the cutscenes. So this is the desktop, this is basically the game's interface before you actually get in the game. I'll check my email first. Oh, I forgot that I have to check the email. CC Corporation, it tells you the version update of the game. Most MMORPGs do this, they just get, send you like an email or make an announcement, say version uh, 2.75 is here. You'll get this, you'll get that. Uh, what I'm going to do is that instead of reading emails, at least the these kinds of emails, I'm not going to read them. I'll just scroll them down and you can just re uh, pause the video and read them yourselves. So uh, this way we can speed things up, because there's in this game there's a lot of reading to do. And with all honesty, you know, to get the time to read all these emails, it's just going to take whole videos. So this one particularly explains the different servers. The 
the servers are divided in root towns, and those root towns will be explored as we go through the games. Because at first you'll only have access to two root towns, but it's only there. It's only there so that you can have a, a level cap. The highest level you can get on this particular game, uh, Dot Hack Infection, is level 30. So that's why you you don't have access to the other root towns unless you play Dot Hack Mutation. So here's the his friend who sent him uh, an email saying. Like, have you reg registered? And right there, he reveals that his in-game uh, name is Orca. Uh, they they already mentioned Orca in Dot Hack Sign. If you recall, he's one of the, des the descendants of Fiana. So the main character already we understand that he knows one of the descendants of Fiana. So it's really cool that we get to see the other the other guy the partner of Balmung. So, and these are the real-life news. They're sort of unrelated to the game. Uh, it's kind of like fake news from the real world. That, you know, stuff that really didn't happen in real life, but they just put it there like, for example, says that the world sold over 20 million copies. And that's like a lot. <laughs> even, even in real life, uh, World of Warcraft, for example, has hit numbers like 11 million or 12 million, but 20 million is like way beyond. Like right there, it says like it's the, the you know, the most sold MMO in history. Here are the goggles that they show on the series or that they wear as they play the game. It's like top uh, technology. Some oh, this is talking about the OS, the um, no, no, this is talking about the voice recognition computers, and this one's talking about the OS Ultimate, which is their their operating system that runs the game. It says that it's like the perfect OS that it just has no errors and things like the uh, something that happened before called Pluto Kiss. It's like a super virus that really messed up a bunch of computers uh, some time ago. That, that's definitely not going to affect uh, this operating system. And this is the login screen. This is where the board is and. This is where, in the series, they read the forum posts and spread the rumors about Tsukasa and the other characters. So Tsukasa couldn't see the board because he had to log out in order to see it, so that's why they had to like communicate with him and tell him what was going on. The same way that with the emails, I'm just going to show you guys here whatever it is that they're saying and you can just pause the video and read and here is uh, they do it on purpose they put the people asking about skills and all that uh, people playing the game but it's more like a information for you so that you get to know how to play the game and so so forth it's uh it's stuff that I remember that I sort of didn't care about at the beginning, like the first time I played this game, and I, it was a it was a really wrong thing to do because this game is not easy. You know, it's not like games these days that that honestly I I think games these days kind of hold your hand a lot and they're they're always like trying to help you out and everything and making things a lot easier. Like for instance. I recently played uh, Resident Evil 6 and I noticed how everything is like uh, they show you where to go they show you what you need to grab you know you know hey, games these days are just holding your hand but games back in the days at least by the time this game came out PlayStation 2 this game is really difficult like it may seem easy and simple but that sometimes you're like exposed to battles that are 
it just seemed impossible, but if you know what you're doing, if you've read the instructions, if you, you know, if you get into the game, you, you can actually bypass the odds and, and use, like, opposing elements like it says right there, uh, you know, and things like that, and those are really important details that I, that I ignored the first time I played this game, and, you know, it really helps to know these things. Because, you know, elemental weaknesses are, like, really necessary to survive. And it'll just get even tougher and tougher as the games go. Like, by the time I'm at the fourth game, it's going to be so hardcore that, you know, I'm going to need a lot of items, a lot of money. I'm, I'm just going to... And, and, well, we'll get into those details as we go through the game. But for now, I just want to show you guys the basics and and the tutorials are not going to end here once I get into the game there's going to be yet another tutorial you know the game is really trying to let you know how it works because once it lets you go it will not help you anymore it'll be like okay you're on your own and uh, so that's how it works this is something interesting though this right here that says something about the state statues and it says that you need to select Chronicling at the part A of a Chaos Gate. It's something that I discovered later because, like, like I said before, I didn't read the forum posts. And here they post the uh, the end, you know, the the players that that have taken up the challenge. Uh, I think you get something out of it if you if you get first place. I don't recall getting first place. But I think I did. I think it's not really that difficult. But it's something that you should do later on when you're like high level, and uh, and it's something that I'll try and remember later on. I usually say I'll do this later on, and then all of a sudden I'm like, like I totally forget. But hopefully I'll remember. And some posts may seem kind of pointless, but sometimes they lead into discovering special areas within the game. Because this game is filled with a lot of secrets, but I haven't like gotten everything. And when I say everything, I'm not talking about this particular volume of the game, I'm talking about the game as a whole. Because there are other things you can do later on that that basically, uh, that I couldn't complete or, or find, because there are so many hidden things in this game. Especially by the fact that the number of areas is indetermined in number, and you'll see later on why. So these here are talking about bursting being the perfect keyword for beginners. The good thing about the forum is that you can always just come back and if you forgot something, a detail, whatever, you can always just come back to the to the board and read. But I'm getting all of these out of the way so that the uh, announcement that says that there are new topics can go away so that when there are really new topics I can come back and check them out. Because it would be kind of annoying if it says new but they're just old posts. Once I read all of them, later on, every time a new post comes out, I can always just read it and uh, maybe get a new area or something like that. And, and that's another thing you need to know, is that you need to keep your eyes on emails and the board, because that's how the game progresses. Like, you might be walking around in circles in the game and you're like, I don't know what to do. Like, uh, you know, like I, like, I, like, I don't know where to go, nothing's going on. Well, if nothing's going on in the game, it only means that outside of the game, there's probably a topic in the forum. Uh, within the game, you get a notification that you've received an email. So with emails, you don't need to, like, keep your eyes very much open. Like, the emails, you'll know when you get them. 
but when it comes to the forum, you really don't know when people post that stuff. This game is uh, basically the thing that got me interested in MMOs in the first place. Because by the time that I played this game, uh, there were a few, there weren't that many as they are today, but there were a few, like for example, uh, Final Fantasy XI. Uh, it was out a few years, I think, like a year or two by the time this game came out. And uh, I didn't I didn't get into it because I thought, well, it's online. And back then, internet connection wasn't as good as it is today. But by the time that I got a pretty good internet connection, that's where I got really interested in playing the game. But this game is the inspiration I got for getting into MMOs, and I got into a bunch of MMOs right after this, starting with Final Fantasy XI, and then I just started playing a lot of free-to-plays except World of Warcraft. And it's basically almost the same thing, it's just looking for better gear uh, and running dungeons. Only that in this game, it's obviously like a story and whatever. These topics here aren't really that important because they're talking about version updates. So, uh, yeah, let's go in. It's gonna be cutscenes now. And, uh, yeah. It's me, Orca, the Blade Master. Wow! You look so different from the real Yasuhiko. Nothing like the real you. Hey, in this game, I'm Orca. Regardless of what I am in reality, I'm pretty well known here. What? No, you look great. <laughs> anyway, take this. Member address is the flash mail address you can only access in the world. With flash mail, you can exchange messages with others in real time, as long as you are in the world. It's mostly used by newbies to contact other players to form a party. Try it out by inviting me to join your party. First, press in the menu, select party. Ne names. Choose a player you want to invite to your party, and send a f since you Now. Ah, got it. Join my party. It's kind of weird mailing each other when we're face to face. See? My name appears under your screen. That means I'm in your party. By the way, flash mail is only available when you're in... A town. Oh, and you can't contact people when they're not logged into the world. People do have a life, you know. We're not online 24-7. In other words, you can't always count on the same members to form a party. So, try to get as many member addresses as you can. You'll have more fun that way. Well, how you play is up to you. But since EXP and stuff isn't divided among party members, you really don't benefit if you go solo. Okay. Well, why don't we head off? There's nothing to worry about. I found a perfect place for newbies. This is the Chaos Gate. Sort of transfer device that takes us from one place to another. Now, press the X button. In the world, each play zone is called an area, determined by a combination of three keywords. Select New Keyword. This is the keyword screen. At the top is the entry plate. You put the three selected keywords one by one for each part, A, B, and C. Left of the entry plate 
is all the keywords you have. You can collect more of them by reading your emails, the board, and from other players. Now, let's enter some keywords by starting with part A. Select bursting from the good. For the last one, now you're done specifying the area. Oh, one more thing. You see the symbol on the left next to the keyword? That's the server symbol. It indicates which server you are currently logged on to. This symbol is Delta, so we're logged on to the Delta server. The list on the bottom right is the area status list. See the jewel next to the field type and dungeon? That indicates how the selected keyword affects the status. For example, check the field type. See the jewel on the right? This means that the field type is being determined by Aquafield, the keyword in C. We don't know what kind of field the current keyword will create until we get there. But once we learn the effect of that keyword, we can combine it with other keywords effectively. For more details, check out the board on your own time. All right, let's get going to the Delta Bursting Passed Over Aqua Field. Select Warp. As he said, this is the lowest level area in the game, and most people go here to level up their first levels and so forth. And he keeps talking. <laughs> Before we get going, let me explain to you about the camera control. During the game, enemies will attack from all directions. The idea is to adjust your view quickly to see your enemy and grasp the situation. I'll explain more later, but remember, you can only use skills on targets you can see. Basically, if you don't use the camera right, you'll be dead before you know it. First, rotate the camera. Push either the L1 button or the R1 button to move the camera. Good. Next, let's zoom in and zoom out. You can zoom the camera in or out by using the right analog stick. Try it. Yeah, that's it. Finally, you reset the camera by pushing the R2 button. There you go. Remember, when the battle starts, constantly adjust your camera. Okay, and this is the field. It's the lowest level in the area. When you want to return to the town, press the triangle button and select Gate Out from the menu. Grassland, Wilderness, and Jungle are some of the field types. You can set them with keywords. The combination of field type and weather determines the area elements. For example, if it's a grassland and it's raining, that area will be a water element stage. The elements also affect the type of monsters that will appear and the items you can get. Don't worry about it now. As you get used to it, combine words to get different elements. Now, let's get going on our quest. First, check the map at top right. You see the red down arrow on it? That's the gate to the dungeon. In the dungeon's deepest level, there's a got statue that usually holds a rare item. Basically, the goal is to reach this statue. But enemies are often tougher down there, so gain some levels above ground before you head below. Okay, wait a sec. By using the fairy's orb, hidden data on the map becomes visible, like this. Yellow areas on the map show magic portals, where you encounter monsters and treasures. All right. How about we go pick a fight? Head for one of the magic portals. For a basic attack, approach the target and press the X button. By the way, a cursor appears on the target so that you can check its name and hit points. Try using a basic attack to defeat some monsters.
started to get the hang of it, right? Okay, let's try using skills. Press the triangle button to open the menu and select. Okay then, choose rep from when the. T That's it. Pretty easy, huh? You can target a party member for recovery or remedy skills and the enemy for attack skills. Remember, you can only apply skills to targets within your view. Before using a skill, adjust the camera so that your target comes into view. Well, you must be sick of me at this point. It's your turn to tell me what to do by using chat commands. Okay, I'll teach you the command to get your members to heal. Okay, next. Well, it's good to be the boss, isn't it? If you use it well, you can bunch up on the enemy or give separate orders to each party member. When you add new members to the party, try various chat commands to see their effects. That's it for now. Just remember what you learned and start exploring. When you think you're ready, we'll head for the dungeon. Alright, finally. <laughs> he talks a lot. I usually use a speed charm, which increases my speed, and I can just run around, get to the portals faster, and, you know, just generally move around faster. Uh... What I, what I selected there, a prep, uh, you know, union, union battle, is the best option you can always have on, because it'll keep uh, the party attacking the exact same enemy that you're attacking instead of wandering around attacking whatever they see. I need him heal me so that I can attack the monster. The things they do in this game that they make you go around with a really strong character uh, who you gain levels with is something that usually MMOs don't do. If you're hanging out with someone high level uh, you're not gonna get XP, but in this game you can, so that makes it a lot easier. <laughs> now we can start exploring the dungeon. One thing you need to remember is that you can't gate out when you're in a dungeon. To gate out and return to the town, you have to go back to the field. The Sprite Ocarina will warp you to the surface, but you can't use it during battle. This is the treasure box, but you knew that, right? You should know that there are two types of treasure boxes, normal and booby-trapped. This one's normal. Hit the X button to open it. This one's booby-trapped. Notice a different color? Try to open it as is, and you're screwed. Just use the fortune wire on it. This item will disarm the trap. See? Now it's safe to open. Press the We'll get a cutscene as soon as we go uh, through this door. What the? Did you just see that? Yeah. Was that thing chasing her? Yeah, but... Something like that on this level? Alright. So, if, if you already watched the videos that I made, uh, you'll know exactly what you saw right there. Scathe is still following Aura. So imagine if I play this game without even telling you how what happened before. So she just disappeared. They went this way, but there's a dead end. Um, there are more cutscenes down below, and I think they kind of last a lot. So I'm gonna be stopping the video soon. Better watch out. We're trapped in here. In the dungeon, there are rooms with traps everywhere. The only way to get out. 
out of a trap like this is by activating all the magic portals in the room. All right, let's charge to that magic portal. Stating the obvious. <laughs> well, the obvious to me because I've already played the game. I wanted to show you my skill, but this guy is just freaking overpowered. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so I'm going to be stopping here, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.